Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show at night with your host and star, Josh Beckish. Badoo boo 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 boo. Badoo 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 boo. Skidoo boo 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 boo. Ba 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 da ba. Here's Josh. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and uh, enjoying what we've got to offer you here on episode one of the show, as you can see, at night with Josh Beckish. I'm, of course, Josh Beckish, your, uh, your, your humbled host here. And to my left here is uh, the only man for the job, the only man that would take the job, and the only <laughs> man that's uh, on that side of the screen right now, everybody, Mr. Byron, my co-host for you. Byron, Hello, how are everyone. you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for the invitation, Josh. It's my Absolutely. pleasure to... To be here, absolutely. absolutely. Couldn't I was honored and flattered. Well, when, when hey, they, yeah, you should be. I had, I had right. literally three other people that uh, were trying to get this gig. So, we well, let and you. they all said no. So that's why I'm here. This is true. Yeah, they all said. Uh, they all said, "Why would I do this?" And I had no good response for them. So <laughs> here we are. Ready to roll. I just didn't think it all the way through, and I just said yes because I've been taught to say yes. You know, that's yeah. kind of. So whatever. I mean, it's, it sounds like fun. I've trained you well, and uh, that's why you're here. Oh, is that it? <laughs> Subliminally, uh, here and there, little things, and you didn't even realize it. But we're 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 glad to have you here. Thank you so much for. Thank you. Thank you again. Sincerely, my pleasure. I oh. appreciate appreciate. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to see people appreciating me. Uh, so yeah. So here we are. First episode. Big big guest coming tonight. Excited. I mean, this is. A perfect time to do this kind of uh you know virtual show right no no let me get my a la dave letterman here you know a lot's been going on lately sure has and the people were clamoring for some real entertainment there was clamoring you say <laughs> clamoring everybody okay. they were dying for it the, you know every day my inbox is filled with people josh when are you gonna help us out here and so so that's where i am i already dropped my pencil so well, you're a step up kind of guy i mean you're always you are there for the people that's that's pretty much what you do that's why people call me josh man of the people so uh you know i'm i'm, I'm glad i'm just here i'm glad that we're i'm glad that we're all safe how, how are you doing and how are you handling all this i you know, know it's about my, the time my of physical year. health is intact uh you know I, i'm doing i'm doing the precautionary measures that are are suggested recommended you know, mental health takes a little hit from time to time. You know, the isolation's tough, but, you know, we have things like this. I participate in a lot of groups that uh, are using this format, platform, same as we're doing right here. And, you know, lots of phone calls and FaceTimes, you know, just doing what we can. Well, I'm, I'm very, you know, I know this must be very tough for you. I know you're a man that's in very high demand. Well, I'm a social guy, you know. Right. I mean, I I'm, I'm spent a lot of time out immersed in, in the community. Oh yeah. And uh, isolation's not my thing, not my go-to. I'm an extrovert, not an introvert, but right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know. Well, it it, it led you to uh, to a gig on the hottest new show on uh, you know, any one of the platforms out there. So, Absolutely. This is it. This is where this is the place to be and I'm I'm a, you know, it's just fantastic. I can't, I couldn't be more excited. Well, this is as excited as I get. You've seen me pretty excited before, haven't you? I've seen you very excited. <laughs> Usually after 2 a.m. He gets very excited about Yeah, something. yeah. We've had some exciting times, you know. Yeah, and we'll save that for another episode and another year. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad to see. I know, I know you, uh, you love being a man of the people. But here, mm -hmm. in, you know, even in isolation, you now get to be a man of the people because this will be seen by, I can only assume... Almost everybody. You can assume almost everybody what? Will watch this. Oh, uh, without question. I, I mean, mean absolutely. Could not, how could you They'd not? They'd be foolish be not to. They'd be foolish not to. You hear that? If you're, if you're not watching, Byron is letting you know you are a fool. And, no. Uh, and you I should didn't, feel, I didn't call them a fool. name. I didn't say they were a fool. I said it would be foolish of them. They would, dis they would display foolish behaviors by not watching. It's a uh, big difference. I'm not I calling a, someone a name. I received a letter uh, yesterday in the mail that from Joe Exotic from the Tiger King documentary. <laughs> on Netflix, said, Even the thought of this show is the only thing that's getting him through his uh, hard time. So I'm glad that we're here and we're able to uh, to keep things going for him. 
Am I the only person on the planet not watching that show? Um, I think there's people that are purposely holding out because it's so cool. Well, yeah, well, I don't. I, I it looks to me like I would probably hate it. I think I don't know. Would, I think you would enjoy it. You are a man. Really? You are a man that enjoys um, a, a person who would be labeled by some as a train wreck, and that is <laughs> that is essentially the entire cast of the show. Now you leave you leave my dating life out of this, sir. This is well, not, we're not I mean, getting that personal yet. Just because I mean, I'm attracted to crazy, damaged, broken people, we don't need to bring that up. Well, no, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I've, 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 I've seen your, uh, I've seen the people that light, light up fire in your eyes when we, uh, when we were in our other uh, social circles and our, right, you know, right, instances. We, should, of, uh, we can save some of that. I was thinking, you know, I didn't know how deep we were going to get into our relationship and how we know each other, but I mean, for this first show, well, simple yeah. introduction's good. We'll let that roll out as time goes. Yeah, on. right. Now you have a guest coming up tonight, don't you? You have a, a, a guest interview. I do have a guest interview, uh, a, a big get for the first show, I feel. Um, we have uh, Bob Lundenin. Lundenin. He's a Midwest boy, I believe. I think born in Ohio, perhaps. He was, we'll, have, uh, we'll have to get the research department to, uh, to vet that and you know, fact check. But uh, yes, Midwest guy, obviously, I believe lives in L.A. now. Yes, lives in uh, film, TV, uh, probably started with some stage acting. I'm yeah, not sure, but I, I most believe, people do. I believe in early, uh, in early life in the uh, improvisational theater uh, scene okay. was involved, and then uh, gradually he has graced our screens in uh, so many different ways. Yeah, yeah. I did a little bit of research, and he has, he has quite a catalog of, uh, you know, of work behind him. Well, I must say, just the fact that you uh, looked in to see anything about somebody that was going to be on the show already gives me great confidence in the fact that you are the uh, co-host here, because I'm. Uh, well, I take I take this very seriously, you know. And as your head writer and producer, I have to, I have to do my job, you know. Absolutely, and as suddenly, as my head producer, I'm I'm waiting for those checks to come in so we can improve, uh, you know, several different parts of the show. You're not the only one waiting for the checks. Well, hey, I mean, I'm sure they're coming soon, you know. Yeah. Once this, I think, I think you really, you really start to get paid when you get those millions of views out there on the internet. <laughs> really what is coming up. Um, sure. So while we've got some time here before uh, Bob shows up, let's, uh, you know, what, what are, what are some, what, what are you doing to keep yourself, uh, you know, entertained? It's a great question. Oh, great, 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 great question. And I appreciate you asking. Um, you know, I'm not a guy that previous to this spent a lot of time at home. I was out a yeah. lot, you know, you know, and uh, my activities used to revolve around uh, my health club in the afternoon, um, maybe a few social gatherings in the evening and nighttime, and then I would work. And, uh, you know, all of those are shut down now. Every, every aspect of my life has, has been altered and affected by this. Uh, yeah, I know you were so getting... Now, so I'm, I'm, I, my, uh, my activity, my, as you know, I'm, I'm very fit and active. Very, very um, yeah. Show everyone so your feet. That I have to maintain that. I, so I, I'm walking a lot. I, I I get up and I walk uh, about twice what I used to. You know, I mean, I was doing three to five miles a day. Now I'm doing about seven or eight miles a day walking. It takes. I don't walk fast, so that takes up a couple hours, two and a half hours. That's a good chunk of the day gone right there. Um. I. Uh, what else do I do? Boy, oh boy, that's, that's that, you know, I, I, I luckily, as the world would have it, the universe kind of took care of me in this way. I recently, about six weeks ago, moved into a new place. As I, um, you know, you have done the same thing. So there's that's plenty of projects to work on there. I still have some unpacking to do, some decorating. As you can see, a lot of the decorating has been done. Yeah. But so I, ha I have some uh, projects I'm working on around the house. I try to stay connected with my important people. You're one of those. So little phone calls, text, FaceTime. Um, I did indulge myself with uh, binge watching the third season, current season of Ozark. Oh, Big fan God. of that show. Big fan of that show. If anyone hasn't uh, dipped their toe in that water, no pun intended, uh, Ozark is phenomenal. Really good. Really enjoyable. Only three seasons. You could catch up even if you're not involved yet. It, and you, most of us have time. Most of us have a lot of time. So, uh, so I've been doing some online th in, in some of the circles I, I uh, 
I'm involved with. They, we have this Zoom platform to uh, meet and socialize and fellowship and, you know, so I'm doing that. That's it. Then what about you? What, how are you killing all your time? Well, you know, as you mentioned, also uh, did move recently and, uh, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, thinking about unpacking and then not actually doing it. So, <laughs> yeah. A lot makes of sense. still lying around. Makes sense. That's uh, consistent with your behavior. Yeah, I uh, I was one of those people that did watch the Tiger King thing, uh, and you know that you know that took up parts of two days. So, so let me ask uh, you this: What I've I've been I'm being prompted by many many people to watch this, and I am one of the people that is resisting so far. It just doesn't seem like my thing. But what's what would my commitment be? How many episodes are? I know it's only one. It's a yeah, docu series, is that correct? A docu series. Docu, docu series. Uh, there, I believe there's uh, seven episodes. I think we're looking at around forty something minutes an episode. So a seven hour commitment. Yeah, ish. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, maybe just I, to be in the know. You know, maybe just to be part of the conversation. Uh, I might. I might visit that. I might. I might. Might see what that's all about. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's definitely worth checking out, I'd say. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, people are going to be talking about it. And as I said, I know you are a guy that likes uh, interesting people. I and sure uh, do. it's not full of them. So definitely uh, okay. have to start taking All right. a look at that. All right, very good. Very good. Well, I mean, hey, and I just want to say, go ahead. And uh, I know, it, like you said, it's tough being inside. And there's a lot of, you know, calling, reaching out and calling and, yeah. All that stuff, and I and I just want to say that I appreciate the fact that you uh, haven't reached out to me too much. And no, I, I I'm pretty good at setting boundaries. I know where where I stand in your world. I mean, I haven't dropped by yet, like I've threatened to do many times. Yes, you know, I've thought about it. I I, 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 I kind of I walk I walk. We live very close to each other now, which is fantastic for both of us. Yeah, um, you know, and uh, I've thought about just doing a walk by, and mm. then like. I wouldn't knock on your door because I, your door might be dirty and contaminated, or you might think that I'm dirty and contaminated, and I wouldn't want to have that awkwardness. But I would just stand, you know, maybe like curbside or in the driveway, and like, yeah, like, hey, hey, Josh, are you are you there? Are you home? Me. So if you hear that, it's probably me. Okay, if you, I'll I'll let you know right now. If I hear that, I'm going to immediately call the police. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Fair. Well, I'm glad we, uh, you know, we got everybody up to speed on uh, who you are. Because uh, I mean, clearly everyone already knows who I am. Right. And uh, yeah, we will, uh, we will, we will continue this journey of uh, self discovery and uh, personal growth in front of the world as the yeah. show goes on and, yeah. on and on. I had some thoughts I wanted to share with you. We didn't have a lot of time before the show, so I just thought I'd share them with you now. Yeah, as a, like an idea, just some, just kind of spitballing here and how we, how to move forward with the show again as your producer and head writer. Um, you know, we start with with Bob, right? Yeah, I think we go on a series of Bobs. You know, we try to find some more Bobs, and as we progress, we get closer to to uh, well, some some more more Bobs. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want I don't want to slight any you know what I mean, but like. We could end up with like a Bob Costas or a Bob Dylan. You know what I mean? Like work our way up the ladder of Bobs. There's right. a lot of Bobs out there, right? There There's quite a, a few. Of Bobs. I mean, are, are we accepting Roberts? I think so. I think we probably will have to. Just, yeah, yeah. You know. Right. You know, Bob I mean, De Niro. I mean, I mean, we get Bobby De Niro, I was, right? I was going to ask because Bob Dylan and Robert De Niro are currently uh, trying to figure out if they can make next week work. So I just wanted to make sure that that would uh, we'd be able to squeeze them in. I mean, I th I would absolutely. I mean, there's I'll always room if, for a couple more bobs. I might I might have somebody more important lined up already, but we'll we'll see if we can get in uh, Bob Dylan and, yeah. and and Bobby D. He can get in with the bobs. It's Bobby D. <laughs> All right. Well, it was. Uh, there's a lot of paths this can take. That's just one of them. We can go a lot of different ways with this for sure. All right. Well, you know, I'm. Uh, I, I thank you once again for joining us. Uh, have, My pleasure. Keep your seat right there. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we, when we return from the break, we will have uh, the one, the only Bob Clendenin coming up right after these words. Hello there, everyone. Uh, this is Josh Vegas. Just 
wanted to let you guys know that uh, in these tough times, we're going to do what we can to try to entertain and, uh, you know, keep everybody's spirits high. So uh, check it regularly. should be coming. Uh, the show at night with Josh. Me, Josh Beckish, coming at you soon. Uh, we hope you enjoy everything you see tonight. This is our first big commercial. I'm here on location uh, in an undisclosed location, but there is lovely water behind me. But uh, we hope you enjoy what you watch tonight, and uh, we'll come back right now with uh, our our big first guest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever episode of the show. It's Josh. I am, of course, Josh your wonderful, soon to be somewhat. Uh, tonight's our first episode, and we have a very special guest. About everything. Uh, a man whose career has spanned multiple generations to multiple families across the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to bring Bob and Denin. Josh, thank you so much for having me on your inaugural episode. I'm honored and flattered. I, uh, you know what? I couldn't have thought of a better person to have on. World <laughs> I need to have uh, somebody that was on the nanny at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Which was my, actually, I think, my very first gig. But, uh, you know, I was going through, because I was like, I was like, Bob's been in so many things. Like, you know, I've obviously seen you in multiple Sure. Things, you know, yeah. A little extra digging. <laughs> Maybe I maybe I possibly missed. It missed a lot. Um, I did notice. Yeah, that was. I was actually going to bring up the nanny because that was one of the two or three roles I saw that you played in, in which you played your character at least was referred to as a bum or. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's actually really funny to chart uh. I don't even think it's a progression, but like there's a lot of like there was bum slash homeless guy, you know, all that thing. And then it sort of elevated to uh, I hit a, a, a period where I was doing nothing, but it seemed like security guards I know and security guards. a lot of security guards. And now um, I am doing a lot of vice principals. There's been awesome. like just this rush on um, sort of mid-level administrators. So I think that's just as I'm aging, I'm going from, I don't know, some reverse, uh, you know. <clears throat> I mean, and if there's a look you want to go for, it's uh, mid-level administrator. Because <laughs> they, they're timeless. Oh, I mean, <laughs> hey, it's, it's a profession that's never going away. They're always going to need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's where I'm at now, career-wise. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear you've, uh, you've gone, I mean, you've gone from the streets to, you know, to the school board, so... <laughs> right. At least we're kind of going up the corporate ladder. You know, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's below bum, I guess dead person, but you know, we could have gone the complete Right. Right. <laughs> um, I'm actually just watching uh I'm my, I'm I'm trying to take this uh quarantine thing uh to the time to introduce my son to a bunch of stuff. I got a seven I got a 17 year old and a 14 year old and trying to get him before he goes to college uh at least in his lexicon to know a lot of the things that the viewing that he should have. So we did like the Godfathers, Goodfellas, almost all the bu the Bill Murray canon. Um, and now he and I, just because I love the show, we're wor working through Barry, uh, which I think is just pure oh, genius. Oh, uh, yeah. um, and there's the whole, there's a one episode where one of the acting class people is talking about um, playing the dead guy on CSI and that, you know, his real goal is to actually play somebody living coming up. It's just, it's just really brilliant. It's just really great. Very topical that there, now that you mentioned. There is a good show. And yeah, I, mean, <clears throat> I think it's most, it's most actors dreams to go from a, a, a role that's in a prone laying down actual <laughs> movement and uh, being up. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's harder than it looks. Cause I've had to be dead a, a couple of times. Like, Fortunately, I was alive in the episode and then died subsequently. So I did. I was able to do both. But that whole lying on a on a cold gurney and not allow and not having your chest move and stuff is is a is a skill. And I have um, a lot of respect for the people now uh, when I see them doing it. Yeah. So playing a dead person, I always yeah. I always <laughs> wonder if you have to just lay there and hold your breath for a long time, or do they put something around you that? Uh, I've had both. I've had ones where I've actually been like um, anesthetized in surgery and they'll 
do like a chest plate that they can then kind of open and poke around in. But, um, and I've also played dead guys where they really can't see any movement, um, either, you know, in cheeks or chest or whatever. And they usually put you on those horrible metal, like, uh, morgue gurneys so that, you know, the comfort factor is not terribly high and you're there for, you know, it could be two hours and, uh, and sometimes you've got like all sorts of shitty prosthetics on you, which I've also had, you know, you, cause you got clawed to death or whatever. Um, yeah. What, what your, we do for a buck. Right. Well, and as long as we're, t- we're on the subject, what was your uh, favorite way to die in one of your uh, roles? Uh, I was in, <laughs> I was in a, um, a Roger Corman movie. Uh, he didn't direct it, but it, it, like he had that, pr- do you know Roger Corman? Like he's the king of the B movies and he was huge in the seventies and eighties and stuff. And, um, and he made just a bunch of really really just awful trashy straight to video kind of movies and i was in one called watchers four uh so there were three watchers prior to my appearance Mm -hmm. and uh and so get a load of this list so i got it was um mark hamill was the was the real name but this was right after that horrible you remember he was in a horrible motorcycle accident and he went for a very long period where he he was unemployed this was one of his first movies back and and he was still uh not in great shape and um, Gary Collins, who was like a newscaster who wanted to sort of try acting. And then Lou Rawls, the soul, the, our favorite soul singer from the 60s. So these are the three guys. And I was a zoo uh, employee who, uh, like a night zoo employee. And I got mauled by this man beast in the zoo that, that, that eventually is the thing they're trying to catch in Watchers. And so I've been shredded. And... Uh, it's that we're shooting in the middle of the night in Griffith Park, which is a part of Los Angeles, and all these they put all the kerosene blood on me to because it was really gruesome, and my eye was hanging out, and all the bees in Griffith Park got got wind that there was a guy basically dipped in honey lying there, and so they're swarming or bee, literally bees are swarming around my face, and the, and the and the grips and the PAs are trying to get them away, and the director's like, no no no, it looks great, they look like flies, leave them. I'm like, this is, this is some janky ass shit that I'm doing here. And I, I, I'm going to trust that this isn't going to get back to Lou Rawls, but I swear he could not remember a single line. If his line was, my name's Lou Rawls, we would have been like, no, nope, what is it again? And so they had to, they tried to tape his script onto my side, but it wouldn't stick because there's so much honey and kerosene or caro uh, blood on me. This is this is a long time ago. That's my that's my favorite death story. No, I mean, well, I mean yeah, anything that involves a bunch of bees coming and land trying to land on your face. Right, and Lou Rawls. Oh, I mean, you know, it goes I, without saying, right? I I could sit here all night and tell you all the stories about Lou Rawls, <laughs> bees in the face, but we'll oh, speaking now. of which, sad face, Bill Withers today. Not that's unhappy. Yeah, very <laughs> upsetting. Very upsetting. Yeah. Yeah, I I thought. I'm hoping that at least in the time where we're all having to stay inside, this is an opportunity for younger people that, you know, see, oh, who's this Bill Withers guy everybody's talking about? Together. Right. Good. Good, good, good. He's, yeah, he's fantastic. He, well, he was fantastic. I'm moving with you because I just noticed the sun's right in my face. So I'm going to just move over here a little bit, get a better angle. I mean, you know, better, better the sun than a How's that? That's better. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, get the washers for, I mean, I, I'm glad to see Mark Hamill. Look for it. I mean, he's really the king of the franchise, if you think about it. He, he really is. He really is. And I'm guessing this was, a, this would have been like mid, I'm guessing like mid nineties. So yeah, a good 15 years ago, at least. So was that, that was one of your. Or 25 um, years ago. Yeah. So was, was that, would, that would have been, that would have been one of your. Early, years. early early yeah yeah um yeah but i think it's available watchers four i think it's still um you can still find it but don't don't try and watch it without seeing the first three otherwise you'll have no idea no. what's happening you're totally lost yeah i mean it's like it's like trying to go into harry potter or lord of the rings like if you go in and watch you know, no who's this guy again do you, do you know are you up to date on how many watchers there have been or did they open? oh that's a great question no i have not i've not seen or whether i killed the franchise well, no, which is also possible I was say, maybe, you know you, maybe you nailed it 
on such a, great, <laughs> such a large scale with your ass. You really know where to go. No. You're very kind, but I think it could just easily have gone the other way. <laughs> I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to dive into those. And, uh, okay, yeah, you find out. Get back to me. I'm going to need the full context here. I'm going to really need to feel that moment. Sure, understood, understood. <laughs> his lines off. <laughs> yes. Close personal friend of the show. If you want to come on the next episode and uh, give your side of this one. Today. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really hoping at some point we can have both you here and we can just have, Split uh, screen? All yeah. The, all the watcher stories we can. Sure. And he'll say, you know, he'll, let, me, let me tell you my version of the story. Uh, oh, I <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, with everything going on, um, I'm sure you know how how is this all affecting you? I'm sure you know. You're oh, I mean, every everything shut down. Everything's everything shut down. Probably a good <clears throat> three weeks ago. Um, you know, we just there's no way in the TV and film industry to have any kind of sense of social distancing. You just can't like. You know, it's in, so, um, you know, uh, obviously it's, there were a couple things that would still be auditioning, you know, in the hopes that they could cast stuff for once we do get released and we're, and they're up and running. Um, and more and more auditions were, uh, not being done in person. People were, uh, casting directors were having people put themselves on tape and just, uh, uh, put, you know, email something in, um, and then just in terms of like uh, sanity, like a couple times now I've gotten together with uh, a couple friends, actor friends who I know, and on via Zoom, we'll just read through like a script, we'll do a play or whatever, um, just because it's fun and goofy and we got nothing but free time, so. I was going to say, if you're sitting around and especially if you're actually working on, you might as well just get everybody together and. Yeah go over it and play around with it. So then, you know, when everything goes back to normal, you know, yeah. we, you know, we went over this and now we've got, you know, a couple ideas for ways we can. I was wondering whether we were just kind of like sh just shooting the shit. And I wondered whether it would be at all possible to actually do like, if you, if you had a play that took place in a living room and we all, and, and it only had like four actors, whatever, everybody creates their own living room and you still do it by a zoom, but could you do it? almost like from four different locations where you, I know that your line's next. So I cut to you, you say your line. Now I cut back to in anticipation of whoever's got the next line. So you actually do like a full production of a play from four separate locations. Huh? I mean, I just, I think it, I, I'd say that's probably doable. I know there's ways where you can, you know, pick who gets to be, <clears throat> when you have multiple people pick who's the yeah. Frames. And like, if you had a master, you could actually sort of designate like a like a like a sitcom director would about which camera we're going to use, yeah. um, and with the story, yeah, it would be kind of funny. Anyway, we're just uh, who knows how much longer we're going to be doing this. If that's the case, maybe it'll come to it. I mean, yeah, I was. Gonna, I mean, hey, you know, if if, if this is going to go on a lot longer, maybe we should, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll write something up and we'll get some people involved and we'll. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, people, they're going to need pilots soon. So, you know, who knows? Well, I, I don't know about you, but we're doing all sorts of crazy stuff by just remotely. Like, we're having, like, we're going to tomorrow night, my wife and I and a couple other couples are going to do a little dinner party via Zoom and yeah, play we, a game and shit like that. And we actually, um, <clears throat> we're doing another one later on tonight that I, but I told everybody to hold on because clearly I have more important things to do. We, uh, <laughs> thank we, you. We set it up last week where we got a bunch of our friends all in on a Zoom call and we did a uh, karaoke night. Wow. Where what we would do is we would just, whoever's turn it was, we'd basically um, have them take the phone or their laptop, whatever they had. And if you go on YouTube, I mean, there's thousands of karaoke tracks. So basically we would just mute everybody else, focus the screen on them, and then yes. music you know, would play and then yeah, I mean and it I mean uh, it was choppy at first and then once we kinda got the groove of it, I mean I think we went on for about three hours or so. It just kinda got lost. Okay, I haven't heard anybody doing that and that's fantastic. That's yeah. actually pretty genius. I mean, you know, if we're we're about I think we're supposed to be doing one in about half an hour with some people. Feel free. So 
just help me with the technicalities. Is only one person um, basically in charge of the, um, the the background music, or is whoever's singing going to find it themselves? So there's no. Um, so the way we were doing it was, like I said, we would whoever's whoever's turn it was to do a song, we would um, we'd have them pull it up on their, like I said, their phone, their laptop, whatever they were using that was better for them, and then mute everybody else, and then. Got it. <clears throat> and then the music would come from their phone or whatever and then they would just sing along sure so you're you're playing your own music yeah like i said just yeah yeah yeah. YouTube and find yeah. The track and then whatever that track that's on the back of there and right go from there i think that's genius how many people did you have doing it i think at our our peak at the time where we had everybody was there and actually doing it i think we had about eight or nine, eight to ten, maybe. It's a pretty good party. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's. It's very hard to actually, as much as you want to see people, it's very hard, you know, because you know, you can't. You know, yeah. Know right. 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 Yeah. Comfort of your own living room or wherever you are, you just pop them on and then. Yeah, that's just insane. But awesome, great tip. Um, yeah, I, I think for our dinner party tomorrow, we're going to play this game, Psych, which is a, a, a an app game somebody found, which is actually really, really fun. That's a good multiplayer game. So we'll okay. kill some time after dinner with the with that. Yeah, I'll have to look in it. Yeah, because we also had an idea where we were going to try to get um, basically what you're doing, like try to get everybody together and get some sort of food to eat. And then we'll just, you know, do a big Zoom while everybody's eating and talk yeah. about what's going on. It's a very, it's a very interesting time. Like I never thought there'd be a point in my life where I would have to, you know, strictly hang out and interact with people I know on a personal level, only via, you know, video. Yeah. The phone. I, I mean, I think in the, in the, in the end, it's going to make us really appreciative of the stuff that we all took for granted for so long, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's what, what's happened is just, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, uh, it's been completely mishandled from the beginning. Yeah, this is where we are. But you know, I'm, I'm, re I really am. If anything, I'm glad to see that. I think it, I think it not only gives people more of an appreciation of actually just being able to go do things, but I think it gives people more of an appreciation for the people they know. Because yeah. In a situation where you have to, you know, find people to talk like this through, you know, I mean, you don't want, you don't want to talk to everybody. No, because no. <laughs> no, they're still annoying. Oh, people, no. <laughs> you didn't stop being annoying just because COVID showed up. Yeah, you would be like, Ugh, you know what? If it was this guy, I would never be talking to this guy. But <laughs> probably turning off the screen. Just, oh, sorry, the video's not working. Oh uh, no! Yeah, exactly. Oh, you did what? What? Another pair of jeans came in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, no, but it's 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 very, it's very uh, it is wild, and uh, but I'm glad you know. I mean, but it's led to opportunities such as these. And, you know, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling my boys that uh, that because uh, it tells you they're like 17 and 14. It's like uh, this is probably going to be the first thing that you in 40 years will be telling your kids or grandkids about. Like, oh. Tell us what it was like during Corona again. You know, it's like, like I, like I remember the, you know, the, the challenger exploding and obviously nine 11 and um, you know, maybe four or five instances. You remember exactly where you were, who you're with when, when that news broke. And I think that for like this under 20 generation, this is, this is their first, like, Holy shit. This is, this is an unforgettable part of history that, uh, that we're now part of. Yeah, absolutely. I um, I, I, call, uh, I have a nephew, and I saw him through you know video and also like in person towards before everything went into like you know staying at home, have to stay at home and all that. And he was asking me about it, and I was I I, would, I just couldn't even comprehend how to explain to him what all right. that meant. He's, you know, he's about to be six years old, so he's gonna when. You know, but I thought about you know when he grows up, he's gonna be like God. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, and all of a sudden I just had to stay inside for you know yeah 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 or however long it ends up being oh boy yeah but i mean I, I think the question on everybody's mind is has zach braff contacted you at all 
No, I'm so, I'm actually really, here's the, um, I'm very sad about this because there, prior to any of this happening, we had plans. There was going to be in Austin a, um, uh, a festival that was going to bring the Scrubs and the Cougar Town casts um, back for um, sort of a five-year, ten-year retrospective. Um, and it was going to be in, I think, June, July in Austin for a week. It was part of a big festival they're doing. So was, there's a lot of other stuff going on, some independent filmmakers and stuff. It wasn't South by Southwest, but it was like that. I think ATX. Um, and I think I'm uh, assuming it's just all canceled. Uh, I, yeah. But I, uh, I, I, I like Zach immensely. And I just saw Bill Lawrence just posted something about, uh, I think Zach and, Donald Faison are doing something together to make uh, to make use of the time. I yeah, I mean, I, I I think the first thing I really like really really remembered you from was well, I mean, I guess first thing was uh, probably you know at my age at the time was Dude Where's My Car. But, sure, Cla- uh, always a classic. I mean, I've watched I've watched it every day. I've been stuck inside. <laughs> um, I uh, but no, but but Scrubs was yeah, that was. Um, I mean, God, that was just such a good show. Such a good show. Maybe the writing was so good. Might not talk about the uh, med school portion of it, but besides that, yeah. No, Uh, it was just just brilliant TV, and I think all the casting was brilliant. The writing was extraordinary. It was just a, and I only did like I think I only did maybe seven or eight episodes, but I think I get recognized from that more than just about anything. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, it was a huge show because not only it went. What seven seasons? Seven or eight seasons? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it was eight. Yeah, around for a while, and then it was on. I know it was on Netflix at one point. I think, and now I think it's on Hulu. Now it's on Hulu, right? Yeah, and and the people, and it's like uh, it's one of those shows that you tend to watch. You can watch the same episode four or five times and Absolutely. not be bored by it. Um, it's well, and it's there's so many little in in. Like the cutaway scenes and the the, uh, the like daydreams and all those things. There's so many little things that they stuck in there that you know you'll watch yeah. times. Then the hundred first time you'll be like, oh my god, how did I miss that? Every other time. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I remember <coughs> you being in that show, and I believe you were. Uh, I don't. I, I think it was implied at least at one point that you were uh, you were in a swinging couple. Oh, for sure, absolutely. Uh, in fact, I think there there was one episode where I gave Dr. Cox uh, and his wife a roofie, um, yeah. which was pretty great. I do remember that. Um, and I tried to I tried to get him to go camping with us. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was it was were in you know with some of those doctors that just popped up every once in a while. But I think out of the you know guest spot doctors i think you were the most I'd have to that, well that's mostly a credit to the writers though because they gave me some of the the best lines ever that whole oh. that line about when i'm watching my wife at home and i said i'm watching her do the i'm she's I'm watching my wife do the dishes and then somebody looks at the screen and says oh my god who are those two naked people i said oh well, that's mr and mrs dish <laughs> it's just oh, I mean- no, yeah, the, the writing on that show along with <laughs> was, I mean, it couldn't have been, I don't, I don't know if you could have made it any better. John, no, no, it was, it was genius, yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and the nicest group of people ever, between Donald and, and um, McGinley and, uh, and Zach, I mean, it's just the, the sweetest, most giving, hilarious group of people you could ever imagine, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the big fan. Did, uh, how- be honest. How much did uh, Donald bring up uh, Clueless? Sorry, how much did Donald bring up what? Clueless. <laughs> it seems to remind you that he was in that major, major motion picture. <laughs> that's true. Oh my god. Oh, we've all see. That's his Watchers Four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Where? I, where? <laughs> I would I would have expected more clueless movies, and then gradually it would have just been plays <laughs> on playing all the characters. Just <laughs> playing all of them, yeah. like uh, <laughs> like uh, oh shoot, I ruined it. Um, what was the oh was it the clumps? What was that movie? The uh, yeah, uh, but no, um, that uh, where Tyler Perry plays all the uh, all the roles. 
Medea something or other. I guess it's any of the Medeas, right? Doesn't he do that? Does he play every single? I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, and one more question about Scrubs over here. How much did Zach Braff hit you up for on that last movie he was trying to get go go fund me funding on? Oh wait, how much did he do what? How much did he hit you up for when he was trying? Oh, to- uh, <laughs> you mean to how much did I have to pay to get a role in it? <laughs> yeah, that was um. Was that uh, "Wish I Was Here"? Wish I were here. I think that's the one. Yeah. Because yeah, he ended up. He did. He was nice enough to let me. Uh, I was an attorney. I think an attorney in that. Um, and I forgot he did. He did crowdfund that. He did yeah. 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 I, I remember that. I think he. I think he actually got some heat for that too. We were like, "I'm not paying. Pay for your own movie." Oh, I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he didn't make anything off syndication. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't end up uh, writing a check. I just, but I do think the world of him. I think he's a great guy. And I think I really love uh, Garden State's one of my favorites. I really enjoyed that. And, Garden State's a very um, polarizing, <coughs> but yeah, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And he's got a good sen- taste in music and, uh, and I just think he's an all around really, really good, decent guy. So yeah. Also, that was another thing about Scrubs. The, the music that was used was, Awesome. I mean, there were so many bands I either uh, started following or at least songs that I would, you know, Shazam and see what the song did. He yeah. was he responsible for a lot of that? I don't know if he was as responsible as Bill Lawrence's wife, Krista Miller, is oh. um, is um, quite an amazing uh, aficionado, and she did pull most of the, a lot of the music for Cougar Town. I think she did the same for Scrubs. So I think it's a lot of it's to her credit. He's um, what's Doctor Cox's wife? Uh, that's that was that was Krista Miller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you mean what was her character name? Yeah, I was trying to remember. I don't, uh, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. But that was Krista. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the soundtrack for that show was great. <coughs> uh, and yeah, I mean everything about it, it was a wonderful. Character. Yeah, it's a, that'll last for last forever. That I think that's one of the great ones. I was I was never in Arrested Development, but I that's still to me one of the great greatest shows ever made. Um, and I don't know if you're a fan of uh, Larry Sanders. Did you were you a fan of that at all? That's something I I wanted to get more into as I got older because I I remember I, like we didn't have that was on HBO right? Yeah, that was an HBO show. That was one of their early big hits. Yeah, we didn't have HBO when I was growing up, but I remember growing up and seeing uh, you know clips from it and you know occasional episode. I think it in syndication maybe on Comedy Central. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, I need, that's one of the things I needed to check into now that I actually, you know, have other people's passwords to watch HBO. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, uh, I need to see if that's in their library or something I can. Yeah, put it, keep it on your list because that's a it's, that was a pretty timeless, just genius show about the whole behind the scenes in a talk talk show, the late night talk circuit, and just inside industry, LA. The you know, it's re- a really brilliant show. No, yeah, well, uh, I will have to look into that. Yeah, please um, do. What else? Uh, what, what's your what is what would you say your fondest memory from Paul Blart Two was? Oh boy, so many. Um, I actually know uh, I'm go- old old friends with the guy. Uh, the director was a guy named Andy Fickman, and uh, he's a big big shot. Um, but when I first got to Los Angeles in like the early '90s, I did a, a small, tiny, you know, ninety seat waiver uh, theater thing with him and and he was the director of a little play that we were in and um we got very close really liked each other and then uh he's used me in a lot of uh, quite a few of the movies that he's done since then um starting with i think race to which mountain um and uh, and then ending with paul blart and i think he likes to do have me do stuff that um uh, is just unpleasant. So that's why I think when the, that, the, the rotten banana eating role showed up, I think he immediately thought that I'd be a good fit for that. Um, so, uh, yeah. Honey all over your face, I guess. Yeah, there's that one. Yeah, exactly. Now he was not responsible for watchers, but he would have loved that. Um, so I get the, some people are curious about how they did the banana gag. Um, and I'll give you some inside dirt on that would they uh they would if you put a banana in the freezer it immediately blackens up and then they would and they would take out the rotten 
kind of mushy banana in the inside uh, very carefully with a scalpel and then put a kind of a fresher, uh, more textured banana inside the rotten peel. And so I could still kind of peel it off and eat it was something that wasn't that gross. But it still had like the gut slime on it. It was pretty nasty. And I had to do it a lot of times. So I owe Andy for that. Yeah. <laughs> James eating any rotten bananas around there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and so with everything going on right now, we'll, uh, I know you, I'm sure you've got plenty going on, so we'll wrap this up shortly, but, uh, just checking how's, how's everybody doing over there with the family? They're good, you know, we just, I've, you know, I've got my family, my boys, we're just trying to stay sane. Like I, I said earlier, we're doing as much, um, viewing as we can. I'm trying to, uh, expose them to some pretty great, uh, you know, pieces of, of filmmaking and TV making, uh, so, um, you know, and, and I'm painting my office and, uh, oh, I'm trying some new, I'm trying, I'm experimenting with facial hair right now. Oh. Um, I'm doing sort of a civil war mustache or a sideburn kind of thing. Okay. See how that goes. So we're trying all sorts of different things just to pass the time. Yeah. I'm in the middle of, uh, deciding I've had <laughs> this grow throughout, you know, the thing. Yeah. And how it looks, but then I'm also worried about the fact that, you know, I step outside and, you know, whatever could be stuck in there could just kind of linger out on my... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Right. But you got a, tr a tremendous blank canvas to work with now if you want to start getting creative. This is true. I mean, I could just, you know, uh, if I shave it off tonight, we'll just kind of... I can do a, I can do a daily update with everybody for, uh, you know, the levels of how things are being handled versus... Yeah. You're... Uh... Your face, I think, could probably care, pull it off far better than mine could, but my wife has prohibited me from doing the um, the Civil War one where your the mustache connects to the sideburns, but then there's nothing on the... You remember that look? It's an unfortunate one. Um, but if you're going to do it, now's the time. Yeah, I'm gonna, I was going to say, if you're, if you're stuck at the house, you know, just, tell me, just, just put a... Just think of something else when you're looking at it. Think right, I mean, she... She can't leave you now, right? I mean, you make a very good point. I, mean, I guess she can't leave back in the house, but, you know, eventually. Um, at, at one point, will you uh, start forcing your boys to watch your uh, entire filmography? You know, it's so funny. They've, they've seen some stuff I've done, but, but not much. Like, they have still have not seen Dude. They haven't seen, uh, I think they've seen a couple of the 70s show episodes. I was on that, uh, I, I think they'd be ready or would like that, uh, I don't know if you saw, I did a show called Quick Draw on Hulu. It was the improvised Western. I saw, <laughs> I, I've seen uh, some parts of it. A couple, like, so it's, I mean, it's good. It's, it's, uh, there's, it's sometimes it's really funny and sometimes we missed, but it's like, that's the nature of doing an improvised show. Um, but it's kind of just goofy enough that I think they might kind of dig it. But I also don't want to be like, hey, come and watch Dad on TV. You know, like, that was just... <laughs> I don't, I, I, you know, if they find it, they find it, um, but I'm not going to push it on. You said 17 and 14? Yeah. I feel like 17 and 14 is a perfect age for Dude Where's My Cross. I think, I think that this, and this is, and during a, and during a quarantine, what could be a better choice? I mean, I, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, they, Do you know that I, uh, I found shortly after we finished rapping, probably within that year, I, somebody sent me a link that go, you're not going to believe this. And somebody had stolen one of those bubble suits and put it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's people. People love movie memorabilia. Oh my God! If you saw what happened in those bubble suits, there was it was like we were filming in the middle of August. And there was so much sweat and nastiness in the, like it's just a walking petri dish. Well, yeah, I mean, and working with uh, with uh, Donkey Lips from Salute Your Shorts, I'm sure he was. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Mary Lynn, Mary Lynn Rice Cub. You did, uh, were you, did they like fit you for those or did they just kind of go like, all right, stand here, we're going to wrap you up. No, nah, they kind of, yeah, there was the, the latter. There was no, there was no, there was not a, a little Italian seams, you know, tailor with the, uh, no, it was. And if you, and if you made a couple pops going, getting into it, that was not, that was your fault. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I can, yeah, <laughs> I can only imagine the times you had to read, having to read, you know, people are walking around there. Their clothes are popping all over. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's it's been a long and uh, career. We've gone, from, we've gone from the gutter to uh, yep. Now you're to to mid level mid level. Uh, <laughs> um, one way to look at it, you're one step away from being a principal, and then who knows where you can yeah. go. Yeah, boy, sky's the limit. I mean, it, it really is. I, I think. I, don't, I guess you know you're very old to play. I don't know a dean at a college. Yeah. Oh my God! Don't don't get me. You're gonna get my head all swelled. Okay, you know you gotta have something to look forward to. Or, <laughs> or we're just gonna start regressing until I'm like back being now the 80 year old homeless guy who's like in his own filth and. I mean, the idea you had about shooting a movie from uh, from everybody's uh, living room. Yeah. Do a movie where you go from vice principal back down to a homeless guy, a bum, as they call it. Like, so like a, yeah, kind of a weird twist on Benjamin Button. And then, yeah, the, and then the final, the final scene is Fran Drescher handing you a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's poised for Oscar buzz, for sure. <laughs> Look at that. This, is, this has been a great brainstorming session. We can both write it off now. You know <laughs> I've, I've got plenty of these ideas. We could, we could, we could. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on your, uh, on your inaugural show. I mean, Hey, obviously thank you so much. I mean, I know uh, this, you know, this is no obligation. This is being broadcast to as many people as we can convince to watch it. So, uh, you know. for sure. And don't, don't hesitate to, to hit me up again. I'll, I'll, I'll come back periodically. I'll be your Steve Martin. Oh, so one final question. I, I was going to say what, I, I well maybe not more of a just I wanted to thank you so much for uh, I don't know what I did but when I <laughs> started following me on uh, Twitter and it was very exciting I don't know oh, good. If that's something that you just you're one of these people I don't know if you follow everybody no 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 I try and keep it uh, very very I try to be very judicious with it so obviously you said something extremely funny or 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 so flattering that I couldn't resist. Well, I mean, if it's gonna, if it'll keep <clears throat> around, I'll I'll definitely start busting out more of the flattery. Uh, okay, either one, they both work. I would have to assume it was something hilarious, but possibly both. Who knows? <laughs> well, thank you. Well, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And sure, Josh. We will uh, we'll be in touch. Sounds great. Let me know. You've got my number. Excellent. Have a great. Bye, buddy. Day. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Stay safe. Well, everyone, there you have it. Uh, first episode of the show at night with Josh, starring Josh Baggish in the books. I will continue uh, to uh, enjoy myself here in uh, my beautiful beachfront paradise. And we will be bringing you more episodes as, uh, you know, as soon as we can churn them out and get them to you. But for tonight, thank you all for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed some aspect of this, I guess. And uh, we will try to get better the next time. So thank you all for tuning in and we will see you next time.